So we're in my garage, we're hanging out with Carol. Carol's over here. She's just chilling and uh, really, she's doing a really good job. Um, this is really good for her. She just needs to like kind of look around and acclimate and just like learn about all these things. Like today, she was just watching my coffee cup really intently like, what is that thing? And I was like, Carol, it's just a coffee cup, calm down. But she didn't calm down. She was like, no, that coffee cup's out to get me. And then now she's cool with coffee cup. Anyways, um, I wanna see how she does if I just kinda sit here and vlog because this is gonna be, this is a big part of our life, Carol. This is what we do. This scanner is made by a company called Autel and it's called the Diag Link. Autel is the brand. Uh, I don't think it has a battery or anything. I, just, I think it runs just directly off the power. And so what you do is you connect this thing and then you have your little adapter for the OBD2. And I believe there's gonna be, yeah, right under here, there's gonna be a little spot to plug this thing in. Okay, right away, it turns on. Now, I'm not really sure if I need to power the truck on or not. So I'm just gonna kinda mess with the settings here. It says it's linking the vehicle. This is what I thought would happen. I got a linking error. Pretty certain that I need to, at least, at the very least, turn on the accessories of the truck. Let's see if that works. I'd like to avoid turning the truck on just because it's gonna scare the shit out of Carol. Status on, codes found one, monitors NA. That's super easy. There's the answer to my question. I don't really have to do any like digging around or trying to figure out what it is. The problem I'm having is an evaporative emission system leak detected and it says very small leak. So that's the trouble I'm having. So that's why all the lights are on at the dash and the traction control turned off. I've never owned one of these before. That makes it so easy, man. That's why mechanics always seem like geniuses. You just take this thing in there and this little computer tells them exactly where to look. Let's see, so emissions, I'm kind of assuming that maybe the intake came loose or this little uh, sensor maybe got dirty. That seems fine. All my hoses seem good. Could be a vacuum leak somewhere. The EVAP system is designed to prevent fuel vapors from escaping into the atmosphere. When the time is right, the vapors are pulled into the engine and burned. A typical EVAP system is complex. Great, sounds expensive. Okay, so I did a deep dive on Google and learned a ton about my EVAP system. So your EVAP system essentially takes uh, evaporated fuels, it scrubs them through an activated charcoal filter and then pushes them into your engine to be reused. Mine has a very small leak. It could be a pinhole leak, it could be a leaky hose, it could be a leaky gas tank, or it could just be a loose gas cap. So this could have triggered at any time. So I'm gonna clear it and see if it comes back. Another problem that I might have is this guy's loose. You see that? Now I think that issue happened because we filled up in Oregon and we let some Oregonite fill our tank for us because it's illegal for you to fill your tank in Oregon in most places. Uh, I blame him. Let's clear that thing and see what happens. Dude, I love this little thing, man. I feel so safe with this. Like, I know exactly what I'm doing now. It's just like so easy. And this one, like color screen and everything, I was not expecting this. And I can save, so I'm gonna save this code. That way I don't forget it. Save success, hit escape. Let's open it back up. It's gonna scan everything. It's showing us all this good information. We're gonna hit okay. Erase trouble codes, are you sure? Yes. Erase done, press any key to continue. Now it's still showing, well let's see. All right, so I'm gonna have to start the truck. I really wanna see what happens when I turn the engine on to see if those codes clear. So I'm gonna put the hood on Carol. It calms her down, kind of like, kind of like putting a, um, she doesn't wanna wear it right now. She tolerates it pretty well. And it's funny because as soon as, as soon as it goes on, it's like it's dark outside for her. 
and she just kind of goes dormant. So just kind of hang her head here, and she's way more relaxed and calm. Birds are super visual, so they get really overstimulated really easily. <laughs> that was easy. And just like that, I fixed the truck. Don't even have to work on it. I love it. But no, really though, all I've done so far is clear the code. So uh, chances are if it was an actual issue, it will come back and that'll let me know that I need to do some further digging and check those things like my EVAP hose, the whole EVAP unit, the gas can, or this, the gas tank. Um, but I, I really do think it had something to do with that fuel neck um, being elongated, maybe vibrating and letting air into the system. I hope that I don't have any more issues. I do have a reminder to do an oil change. Uh, I do pretty well with most of my maintenance, but I don't do it every time that light comes on because it's just a little bit overkill. I use like full synthetic oil. It doesn't need to be replaced every 10,000 miles or whatever they say it does. Uh, so I kind of go every other reminder. So I'm gonna also clear that reminder. And this is all just like a huge coincidence that I happen to be testing this product uh, and have all these lights on in my truck. It's just perfect. All right. That yellow triangle is the light that I'm referring to. Uh, I want that to go away. So basically see how it says maintenance required. Oh, interesting. So it wants me to download like the oil intervals uh, for Toyota and I can get one for free when, buy, when I buy this. So if you're a mechanic and you need all these different things, you might have to pay more. But I can go download Toyota by putting this, plugging this into my computer and that'll tell me what all the different intervals are. Well, that's downloading. I wanna go through not just what the code is like and what's wrong with my truck there with codes, but also all the other issues that just irritate the crap out of me with this truck. Well, for one, I need to get it wrapped or painted. These is just, this is just unpainted fiberglass and it has some flaws and it had some weak areas. So like little chips here and there where it's just little holes in the fiberglass and that kind of drives me nuts. The vast majority of this damage is from Moab. Um, I got like a big chunk of fiberglass missing right here. This is just fiberglass problems, some stuff tearing apart out there. Let's see, what else? This headlight is just hanging there. It's totally busted. The alignment is still a little bit off. And then of course down here, that same issue, this boot is popped off. Meaning, if I don't fix that soon, I'm gonna have another blown CV. So that just drives me nuts. So that's another thing I need to do. I need to fix that CV joint. Down here on this side, my CV joint has just got some play in it. It's just kind of loose. And so it probably needs to be replaced or just taken out, probably make a good spare. But I think it's just been kind of stressed out a little bit. I'm just showing you all those things because not everything is what it looks like in the pictures. You know, like the truck has been awesome. It is great. It's beautiful, but up close and personal, it's not perfect and that's okay. You know, it's fine with me. It needs some maintenance. It needs some love. Every once in a while, you need to work on things a little bit. I'm still struggling to figure out like the download portion of that scanner, but I don't really have time to just keep messing with it. So today I'm going to fix that CV boot that's been driving me nuts forever. I got some bigger boots. Okay. So what I'm trying to do, because I keep having boot problems and it's because my long travel kit flexes so much um, that the outer boots just get over flexed and they pop off. And then of course, grit and grime gets up inside my CVs causing them to fail early. So I have these boots from All Pro. They are designed to give that outer boot a lot more flex. So it's got this whole additional cup to it. But unfortunately, I have to take the whole hub and bearing assembly off. It's a ton of work. So that's what I'm working on today, uh, trying to get this thing done. <coughs> Woo! This thing is on there. Holy. So this guy is behind this cover, and there's like this little blue ring that goes over there and a cotter pin. So you can see just all this grease and then grit gets up inside of there. Got it. 
So this end comes off way easier. Way, way, way easier than this end. So we're just gonna leave this end attached. We're gonna take all the boots off this way, get this thing cleaned up really good. We will uh, put the new boot on this end, the larger boot. There's a large boot here and a large boot here. with my big fat boot on there that I've had to do this. I mean, I should have done this years ago. Now I gotta try to figure out how to get this thing in here and it's not gonna wanna go easy. Carol and I have successfully rebooted that CV that's been a pain in the butt. Uh, I'm going to skip the driver side for now because it never comes off. It just seems to be a problem that side has and I don't know why. As soon as this side comes off, I'll fix it, but no need to do it right now. But uh, I know I was showing you guys that scanner. Uh, so far I've been really impressed with the scanner. It's super cool. Um, I can use that tool to turn off the maintenance light or the oil reminder light, but there's also a pretty cool way to do it if you don't have a scanner, which I wanna show you guys. So what you do is start by double tapping your engine start button to get your dash to come on. Once everything's on, you're going to go to trip A by pressing this button here. Press and hold that trip reset button Turn off your accessories. Keep holding. Turn it back on. Continue to hold that, that button up here on your dash. Turn it all the way on. You're gonna see three, four dots flashing. They'll go away. And just like that, that reminder should be gone. No more, no more check engine light, no more trip light. I'll pretty much always have a tire pressure sensor light on until I get my next set of wheels uh, because I don't have tire pressure sensors. But uh, everything is uh, good to go and looking good. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. I hope that you learned something. I know that this was kind of, kind of all over the place. This has really been a crazy week for me, uh, bringing in Carol and everything. Like we've just been so busy. Uh, but thank you Carol for watching over me as I worked on my truck today. Uh, she's been a good girl. She's been real good. She started to eat from my hand. She's doing awesome, uh, making tons and tons of progress pretty soon. Uh, she doesn't have to wear that hood all the time. It just keeps her calm, so we'll take it off and on. But uh, pretty soon here, she won't really have to wear it at all, which I'm really looking forward to. So, we are good to go, ready to hit the snow this weekend. We're gonna be going out with some Jeeps. I'm glad that I did that to the truck because I won't have to worry about it as much. And uh, so stick around for that vlog, which is coming up soon. Also, a bunch of falconry videos coming as well as shifter cart videos as I finish that shifter cart. And uh, I'm just really excited about this, this vlog and where it's headed. We got tons of cool stuff coming and a surprise coming in January, which is gonna blow your mind. So thank you so much. Get some work done this week, but don't forget to live. Oh, Carol, my shop is a mess. You wanna come on down? You wanna come say hi? Come here. Come introduce yourself. I'm about to be
Tôi sợ ăn 